I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was eight and I didn't really see it as a disability. I had great levels of help with learning techniques to get around the problem of having dyslexia. While I was at school, I had extra lessons. A friend of mine called Ed, he was, you know, in my extra English classes, he he just didn't care. He didn't want to do anything. He did see the his condition as a disability. It was, I think, because he'd been given the excuse. My dyslexia categorised itself with not being able to think I would be physically able to read something. So if I saw a, a long page of text, I would see it as too difficult and I just wouldn't try. And instead of looking at individual words and sentences, I would look at a big thing of text in front of me. Wasn't sure how to read it, and so I'd give up. I learnt to treat words as a code, and I learnt during the extra English lessons to to decipher the code that I had in my head. So it was sort of like I was learning another language as if writing were a different language. I found quite early on that I had other abilities, so I wasn't just rubbish at spelling. I was good at drawing and I was good at maths and I was very interested in science. I got over some concentration issues I had by uh, doodling. So I would uh, draw little sketches on the sides of paper and that helped occupy part of my brain that, um, that wanted to just go outside. It sort of seemed counterproductive from an outside point of view. And a lot of times teachers and lecturers who didn't know became very insulted by what I was doing. And when I didn't have a piece of paper, I would draw on my hand and my wrist and on my arm. So I'm perfectly good with words. I'd like to think I was quite eloquent. If you asked me to write down and think of the things I say, I wouldn't be able to do it. It would just come out as shorter words, words mostly that I knew how to spell. So a lot of the time I avoid words I don't know how to spell and use a simpler alternative. And so it doesn't quite come out as the way I'd say it. Through picking a career, I was lucky enough to be able to go to university and, and actually choose what I was going to do. I chose to do design and I chose to do design engineering. The research that I did was to figure out whether there was a link between a baby being born prematurely and the mother having a postnatal illness. My hypothesis was then proved and I moved on to, to the more creative stage and I wanted to solve the problem and I wanted to incorporate that into a product that could be used to help people. Uh, and especially since the, the research I did was very, very personal and I sort of had a, a strong belief in the, in the project I was doing, it was quite difficult because it was a, a creative module. And, uh, and eventually I designed an entire incubator and make the system work better, but the, but the machine gave the effect of perceived contact. I, I had to reassess my ideas and come back to it and start again. And, um, and it was through the, the process of concentrating and concentrating on the design that I managed to finally get out with the idea that I, I came up with in the design that I presented at the end of the year and um, the design that got me my degree. A lot of the help that I got was from my now wife. She's a school teacher. She marks 10 year olds English work every day. And so she was a great help in helping me to capitalize letters and put commas and apostrophes in. And I made my life easier um, by going to uh, the disability office and they helped me to get extra help in a lot of the essays that I needed to do. Find the thing that your disability has given you an ability to do. My sister as I'm, is a phenomenal artist. She's, she's 14 and she's a genius at life art. She can draw anything from memory. That's an astounding talent that she wouldn't necessarily have had it not been for her autism. Enjoy the things that you do have.